welcome to AD Academy. In this video, we are going to solve this little bit complex physical uh, system model of this mechanical system that consists of a spring, uh, two masses, M1 and M2, and two springs, KS and KT, and this question is being modified with an addition of this damper connected between M2 and the ground. So, in order to draw the block diagram for this kind of a mechanical system, we are going to use the same terminology of drawing the free body diagram, and then from free body diagrams, we'll draw the uh, equations, and then by looking at the equations, we'll draw the block diagram. So, for the free body diagram, first of all, we are going to start from M1, which is our mass one, and we are just going to simply draw this mass block here, named as M1, which is having an input force Fi going downward and having a displacement alongside named as Xt. Now, to draw the uh, reactive force produced by Kt, first of all, we have to understand that how the spring Kt is going to react when there is an input force, Fi will work downward. So, when the input force Fi will go downward in this direction, the spring KT will produce a reactive force against the input force Fi and will pull this mass upward, which means we are going to have a reactive force on the top of M1, which will be named as FKT, which will pull this mass upward. So, we are going to draw this uh, direction upward, which is FK. T. Now, uh, we are done with the uh, with the free body diagram for M1. And now let's jump on M. Uh, sorry, M1. And now let's jump on M2. And for M2, we are just going to draw simply the same block here, which is M2. And uh, now e we are going to understand when the M uh, F I was applied on M1, the spring K T was pulling this mass upward as a reactive force. However, dealing with M2, because of this input force F I, somehow the spring is M1 is going to move downward, which will pull this M2 downward as well. So, which means the the F KT for M1, which was a reactive force for M1, was pulling this mass upward. However, dealing with M2, that FKT will work as an input force for M2 and will pull this mass downward. And as a reaction of this force, this F KS, which is a force will produce by spring KS, will pull this mass upward, and the same way the damper will pull this mass upward as well. So we are going to have a three forces: one, which is FKT, working as an input force for M2 in pulling this mass downward, and the other reactive force FKS will pull this mass upward and the force produced by the damper FC will pull this mass upward as well. So, simply, we're going to draw these forces, F, K, T, we're having another force, F, K, S, and another force, F, C, and having a displacement alongside here, which is called X, S. Now, we're done with the free body diagrams, and we're going to jump on how to draw the um, the equations. And for the equations, all we have to do is start from a very simple equation, which is F equals to MA, and give this equation, equation number one. We're using a spring constant, which comes from the Hooke's law, and which is K times X. K is a spring constant, and X is a displacement. Let's give this equation a name, equation number two. And because we know this displacement, I'm talking on this Hooke's law, and that will be taken from here and the displacement here. Now, let's say we are going to have uh, two masses here, which is M1 and M2, which means we are going to have uh, two net forces working on M1 and M2. And let's give the name and uh, the force that will work on M1 will give this name F net 1, and the force that will work on mass 2 will give a name F net 2. So, for F net 1, we are having F net 1 is equals to Fi minus Fkt. As I explained in the earlier videos, 
uh, because Fi is going downward and Fkt is going upward and whenever the reactive force is going in the opposite direction of the input original force we always subtract them from the input original force and whenever they are in a similar direction we just simply add them and now give this equation equation number three now we got our fi uh, f net one now we have to figure it out what is fkt because we don't know what it is so for fkt is equal to because this is a k which means the spring constant and it is k times displacement and displacement will be taken from xt and xs because the movement for m1 is going to be between here in here and at this point we are having an xd which means starting from xd and stopping at xs so we'll minus uh, we'll, so what we'll do we'll put uh, xs minus xd because the movement is from here to here so simply we're just going to k times x t minus x s and that is our equation number for which is very similar to the uh, to the question that we done just in the uh, just just before uh, I will put the link for that video in the description so you can follow up there as well but now coming to fnet2 in fnet2 there are two things happening and that question is exactly the same as the uh, that I uploaded in the, my very first video I will put the link for that video in the description as well so you guys can follow up there as well and uh, uh, le le let's go for the um, F net 2 and for F net 2 as we can see if we are having two, uh, one force FKT going downward FKS going upward and FC which is the damping force is going upward as well so we are having a two forces going upward and one force going downward which means the force which is FKT as the original as an input force is going downward so which is in positive FKT and that's minus the FC and FKS now because these two forces are in the same direction and going upward which means we are going to sum them up and then the sum of them will be minus from FKT now we go our uh, we're just gonna open these brackets and make it a bit simple so we are having FKT minus FC minus FKS and let's give this equation equation number five now the, uh, the uh, now the only thing we have to find out now is FKS what is FKS equals to now we're just gonna simply do the FKS is equals to because the spring constants are k times the displacement now the displacement for um, FKS uh, will happen between the ground and the M2 and we know at this location the displacement is XS however at the ground the displacement is zero because there is no movement is going to be happen at the ground so we're just going to place XC Oh, sorry xs minus ground and we'll just replace these as k into xs minus zero which will give us k x s so let's give this equation equation number uh, six i'm just gonna simply rewrite this so it will be much easier to understand so fks equals to k times xs let's give this equation equation number six the last thing left is fc which is here now fc fc is the force produced by the damper connected this fc belongs to this damper here uh, i'm just gonna pull this bit downwards so much easier with this damper because this damper is connected between m2 and the ground and we are having a damping coefficient which is c and we know the force produced by the damper will always be taken as f c equals to the damping coefficients times the velocity and let's give this equation equation number seven 
Now, we are done with all these equations and we can now just start drawing the block diagram. And for that, I'm just going to scroll this page bit up and uh, let's start drawing the block diagram. And uh, uh, so we having a two masses as well. So which means we are going to use the integral sections as well. Uh, so two blocks of integration for each mass, which means um, they're going to have a total of four blocks for M1 and M2. And why is that is because we know that displacement is a second derivative. And when we integrate the acceleration, we'll have a velocity. And when we integrate the velocity, we'll have a, a displacement, which is x. So, so we are going to have a two blocks of um, integration for each mass, block one and block two. We're having an acceleration going in, velocity going out, and we're having a displacement. Let's give this displacement name kxt because it's uh, related to uh, m1. You can you can give any name. Just make sure that you are giving the right name for the right mass for the right displacement. And I'm just going to write down here. This is belongs to m1. And similarly, I'm just going to write draw another block as well for this uh, for another displacement, which is a which is velocity going into the integral block, and we having an xs and that block is going here. Now, the A is coming from equation number one, which is um, F equals to MA and keeping A as a subject, I can have uh, F over M and I know which means F times uh, one over M. So because this uh, acceleration is relating to M1, so I will replace this force with M1 and this F with F net one because this is related to F net one here. So I'm just going to draw another block here and just going to M1 and the force going inside is F net one and I know F net one is sum of few forces which is um, F net one is equals to F I minus F K T now F I minus F K T which means I'm having an input force F I which is positive and minus F K T F K T now F K T I got it here and uh, what is now FKT? For FKT, we'll jump on equation number uh, equation number four, which is right above here. And FKT is equals to K times a sum of XD minus XS, which means for this section, I'm going to use the submission block and, uh, and negate them from each other and send them into the submission block and then I will multiply that submission block with the constant and send it back as a negative feedback into FKT. Now I'm going to use a submission block here. This XS is negative and XT is positive and I'm going to multiply this with the constant. Just going to simply remove this from here and going to send back this one because this is not equals to F net and I'm going to send it here. Now simply scroll this up. Now I'm done with this one. Now let's come at uh, acceleration here for XS and I know XS is related to is uh, related to uh, to mass 2 just here and for that I'm going to use the same method and multiply this acceleration with 1 over m2 and I know the force that's going inside is f net 2 as we can see that from this equation here and for this equation I got f net 2 and I know f net 2 is actually sum of three different forces fkt minus fc minus fks 
I got FKT simply from here, which I can just simply send it into this one, which is positive. Now, FC, uh, which is negative. Let's say I will put this here, minus FC. And I'm having a minus FKS as well. And I will just put minus FKS here. Now, what is my FC and FKS? Now, for FC, because I know FC is a force produced by the damper just here, and which is uh, which is actually um, uh, damping coefficient times the velocity, but which velocity? Now, that's the question. Now, which velocity means, uh, because this is connected between ground and the mass two, so the velocity produced by the mass two, which is here, this velocity, because this is related to xs and xs is related to mass two and this related to mass one. So I'm going to use this velocity and times it with the constant name c and send it back here so i'm having a c which is a damping coefficient times the velocity here which is here and send it back as a negative feedback into the submission block and i am now this is equals to minus fc now the leftover is minus fks i'm going to use the simple terminology take this displacement here times it with the constant and send it back into this one and now you are done with fk uh, um, um, k fks as well which is k times displacement of s so that's how you draw the block diagram for a little bit more complex uh, physical or mechanical system of model and uh, this is not really too hard but a little bit more complex uh, if you compare them with the earlier videos or the earlier question that we have done um, we are done with this question and uh, please like, subscribe and comment in this video and please give me your feedback and let me know if there is anything I can do to make these videos better or, the, or anything that is causing you issues in understanding. Please give me the feedback and I will definitely pay attention to those things and uh, please subscribe my channel, like, share and send this link to your friends and followers so I can get more subscribers and then in this way I can help many people to understand um, thank you very much for watching my video and I will see you in the next video thank you very much